Sanskrit prosody or chandas refers to one of the six Vedangas, or limbs of Vedic studies. It is the study of poetic meters and verse in Sanskrit. This field of study was central to the composition of the Vedas, the scriptural canons of Hinduism, so central that some later Hindu and Buddhist texts refer to the Vedas as chandas. The chandas, as developed by the Vedic schools, included both linear and nonlinear systems. The system was organized around seven major meters, according to Annette Wilkie and Oliver Meebus, called the Seven Birds or Seven Mouths of Brihaspati. And each had its own rhythm, movements, and aesthetics, wherein a nonlinear structure aperiodicity was mapped into a four verse polymorphic linear sequence. Sanskrit meters include those based on a fixed number of syllables per verse, and those based on fixed number of more per verse. The Gayatri meter was structured with three verses of eight syllables, six by four, the USNIH with two verses of eight and one of twelve syllables, seven by four, the Anustab with four verses of eight syllables, eight by four, Brihati with two verses of eight followed by one each of twelve and eight syllables, nine by four, the Pankti with five verses of eight syllables, ten by four, the Tristab with four verses of 11 syllables 11 by 4, and the Jagati meter with four verses of 12 syllables each 12 by 4. In Vedic culture, the Chandas were revered for their perfection and resonance, with the Gayatri meter treated as the most refined and sacred, and one that continues to be part of modern Hindu culture as part of yoga and hymns of meditation at sunrise. Extant ancient manuscripts on Chandas include Pingala's Chanda Sutra, while an example of a medieval Sanskrit prosody manuscript is Kadara Bhattas Vrtaratnakara. The most exhaustive compilations of Sanskrit prosody describe over 600 meters. This is a substantially larger repertoire than in any other metrical tradition. Etymology The term chanda Sanskrit, chanda means, "...pleasing, alluring, lovely, delightful or charming", and is based on the root chad which means, Esteem to please, to seem good, feel pleasant and or something that nourishes, gratifies or is celebrated." The term also refers to "...any metrical part of the Vedas or other composition." History The hymns of Rigveda include the names of meters, which implies that the discipline of Chandas Sanskrit prosody emerged in the 2nd millennium BCE. The Brahmanas layer of Vedic literature, composed between 900 BCE and 700 BCE, contains a complete expression of the Chandas. Panini's treatise on Sanskrit grammar distinguishes chandas as the verses that compose the Vedas, from bhashya Sanskrit, bhashya the language used for learned discourse and scholastic discussion of the Vedas. The Vedic Sanskrit texts employ 15 meters, of which seven are common, and the most frequent are 3, 8, 11 and 12 syllable lines. The post-Vedic texts, such as the epics as well as other classical literature of Hinduism, deploy both linear and nonlinear meters, many of which are based on syllables and others based on diligently crafted verses based on repeating numbers of more matra per foot. About 150 treatises on Sanskrit prosody from the classical era are known, in which some 850 meters were defined and studied by the ancient and medieval Hindu scholars. The ancient Chandasutra of Pingala, also called Pingala Sutras, is the oldest Sanskrit prosody text that has survived into the modern age, and it is dated to between 600 and 200 BCE. Like all sutras, the Pingala text is distilled information in the form of aphorisms, and these were widely commented on through the Bhashya tradition of Hinduism. Of the various commentaries, those widely studied are the three 6th century texts, Jayadevashandas, Janashrayi Chandavichati, and Ratnamanjusha, the 10th century commentary by Karnataka prosody scholar Halayuda, who also authored the grammatical Shastrakavya and Kavirahasya, literally, the poet's secret. Other important historical commentaries include those by the 11th century Yadavaprakasha and 12th century Bhaskaracharya, as well as Jayakriti's Chandanashasana, and Chandamanjari by Gangadasa. Major encyclopedic and arts related Hindu texts from the 1st and 2nd millennium CE contain sections on Chandas. For example, the chapters 328 to 335 of the Agni Purana, chapter 15 of the Natya Shastra, chapter 104 of the Brihat Samhita, the Pramodajanaka section of the Manasalasa contain embedded treatises on chandas. Topic: <laughs> Elements. Topic: <laughs> Nomenclature. 
A syllable akshara, aksara in Sanskrit prosody, is a vowel following one or more consonants, or a vowel without any. The short syllable is one with short vowels, which are a, a i, i, u, u, r, r and l. The long syllable is defined as one with long durga vowels, which are a, a i, i, u, u, r, r, e, e, i, i, o, o and o, o a stanza padya is defined in Sanskrit prosody as a group of four quarters padis. Indian prosody studies developed two types of stanzas. Vrita stanzas are those that are crafted with a precise number syllables, while Jati stanzas are those that are based on syllabic instants more, matra. .The Vrita stanzas are further recognized in three forms, with Samavrita where the four quarters are similar in its embedded mathematical pattern, Artisamavrita where alternate verses keep similar syllabic structure, and Vishamavrita where all four quarters are different. A regular vrita is defined as that where the total number of syllables in each verse is less than or equal to 26 syllables, while irregulars contain more. When the meter is based on more matra, a short syllable is counted as one mora, and a long syllable is counted as two more. Topic. Classification The meters found in classical Sanskrit poetry are sometimes alternatively classified into three kinds. Syllabic verse or aksharavrita, meters depend on the number of syllables in a verse, with relative freedom in the distribution of light and heavy syllables. This style is derived from older Vedic forms, and found in the great epics, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. Syllabo-quantitative verse varnavrita or varnavrita, meters depend on syllable count, but the light-heavy patterns are fixed. Quantitative verse matravrta or matravrta, meters depend on duration, where each verse line has a fixed number of more, usually grouped in sets of four. Topic. Light and heavy syllables In most of Sanskrit poetry the primary determinant of a meter is the number of syllables in a unit of verse, called the pada, foot, or quarter. Meters of the same length are distinguished by the pattern of lagu light, and guru heavy, syllables in the pada. The rules distinguishing lagu and guru syllables are the same as those for non-metric prose, and these are specified in Vedic shiksha texts that study the principles and structure of sound, such as the pratishakyas. Some of the significant rules are A syllable is lagu only if its vowel is hrasva short and followed by at most one consonant before another vowel is encountered. A syllable with an anusvara m or a visarga h is always guru. All other syllables are guru, either because the vowel is durga long, or because the hrasva vowel is followed by a consonant cluster. The hrasva vowels are the short monophthongs, a, i, u, r, and l. All other vowels are durga, a, i, u, r, e, i, o and o. Note that, morphologically, the last four vowels are actually the diphthongs i, i, o and o, as the rules of Sandhi in Sanskrit make clear. Gangadasa Pandita states that the last syllable in each pada may be considered guru, but a guru at the end of a pada is never counted as lagu, for measurement by matra more, lagu syllables count as one unit, and guru syllables as two units. Topic. Exceptions The Hindu prosody treatises crafted exceptions to these rules based on their study of sound, which apply in Sanskrit and Prakrit prosody. For example, the last vowel of a verse, regardless of its natural length, may be considered short or long according to the requirement of the meter. Exceptions also apply to special sounds, of the type pra, hirwa bra and kra. Gana Gana Sanskrit group is the technical term for the pattern of light and heavy syllables in a sequence of three. It is used in treatises on Sanskrit prosody to describe meters, according to a method first propounded in Pingala's Chandasutra. Pingala organizes the meters using two units L, A, light, syllable L, called lagu G, A, heavy. Syllable H, called Guru Pingala's method, described any meter as a sequence of ganas, or triplets of syllables, trisyllabic feet, plus the excess, if any, as single units. 
There being eight possible patterns of light and heavy syllables in a sequence of three, Pingala associated a letter, allowing the meter to be described compactly as an acronym. Each of these has its Greek prosody equivalent as listed below. Pingala's order of the ganas, viz. Myrstjbhn, corresponds to a standard enumeration in binary, when the three syllables in each gana are read right to left with h equals 0 and l equals 1. Topic. A mnemonic The word Yamadarajabhanasalaga or Yamadarajabhanasalagam is a mnemonic for Pingala's ganas, developed by ancient commentators, using the vowels a and a for light and heavy syllables respectively with the letters of his scheme. In the form without a grammatical ending, Yamadarajabhanasalaga is self-descriptive, where the structure of each gana is shown by its own syllable and the two following it. Ya gana, yama ta equals lhh Ma gana, ma ta ra equals hhh Ta gana, ta ra ya equals hhl Ra gana, ra ya ba equals hlh Ya gana, ya ba na equals lhl Bha gana, ba na sa equals hll Na gana, na sa la equals lll Sa gana, sa la ga equals lhthe mnemonic also encodes the light la and heavy ga unit syllables of the full scheme. The truncated version obtained by dropping the last two syllables, viz. Yamadarajabhanasa, can be read cyclically i.e., wrapping around to the front. It is an example of a de Bruggen sequence. Topic. Comparison with Greek and Latin prosody Sanskrit prosody shares similarities with Greek and Latin prosody. For example, in all three, rhythm is determined from the amount of time needed to pronounce a syllable, and not on stress quantitative meter. Each eight-syllable line, for instance in the Rigveda, is approximately equivalent to the Greek iambic dimeter. The sacred Gayatri meter of the Hindus consists of three of such iambic dimeter lines, and this embedded meter alone is at the heart of about 25% of the entire Rigveda. The ganas are, however, not the same as the foot in Greek prosody. The metrical unit in Sanskrit prosody is the verse, line, pada, while in Greek prosody it is the foot. Sanskrit prosody allows elasticity similar to Latin Saturnian verse, uncustomary in Greek prosody. The principles of both Sanskrit and Greek prosody probably go back to Proto-Indo-European times, because similar principles are found in ancient Persian, Italian, Celtic, and Slavonic branches of Indo-European. The Seven Birds, Major Sanskrit Meters The Vedic Sanskrit prosody included both linear and nonlinear systems. The field of Chandas was organized around seven major meters, state Annette Wilkie and Oliver Meebus, called the Seven Birds, or Seven Mouths of Brihaspati, and each had its own rhythm, movements, and aesthetics. The system mapped a nonlinear structure into a four verse polymorphic linear sequence. The seven major ancient Sanskrit meters are the three eight syllable Gayatri, the four eight syllable Anustab, the four eleven syllable Tristab, the four twelve syllable Jagati, and the mixed padas meters named Ushna, Brihati, and Pankti. Other syllable based meters Beyond these seven meters, ancient and medieval era Sanskrit scholars developed numerous other syllable-based meters Akshara Chandas. Examples include Atiyagati 13 by 4, in 16 varieties, Sakari 14 by 4, in 20 varieties, Atisakari 15 by 4, in 18 varieties, Ashti 16 by 4, in 12 varieties, Atyashti 17 by 4, in 17 varieties, Driti 18 by 4, in 17 varieties, Atiriti 19 by 4, in 13 varieties, Kriti 20 by 4, in 4 varieties, and so on. Topic. More based meters In addition to the syllable-based meters, Hindu scholars in their prosody studies, developed gana chandas or gana vrita, that is meters based on matras more, instance. The metric foot in these are designed from lagu short more or their equivalents. Sixteen classes of these instance-based meters are enumerated in Sanskrit prosody, each class has sixteen sub-species. 
Examples include Arya, Ujjiti, Upajiti, Jiti and Aryajiti. This style of composition is less common than syllable-based metric texts, but found in important texts of Hindu philosophy, drama, lyrical works and Prakrit poetry. The entire Samkhyakarika text of the Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy is composed in Arya meter, as are many chapters in the mathematical treatises of Aryabhata, and some texts of Kalidasa. Hybrid meters Hindu scholars also developed a hybrid class of Sanskrit meters, which combined features of the syllable-based meters and moray-based meters. These were called matra chandas. Examples of this group of meters include Vedalya, Matrasamaka and Gityarya. The Hindu texts Kiratarjuniya and Naishada Karita, for instance, feature complete cantos that are entirely crafted in the Vedalya meter. The Hanuman Chalisa, a 40-verse hymn of praise to Hanuman, is composed in Matra Chanda. <laughs> meters as tools for literary architecture The Vedic texts, and later Sanskrit literature, were composed in a manner where a change in meters was an embedded code to inform the reciter and audience that it marks the end of a section or chapter. Each section or chapter of these texts uses identical meters, rhythmically presenting their ideas and making it easier to remember, recall, and check for accuracy. Similarly, the authors of Sanskrit hymns used meters as tools of literary architecture, wherein they coded a hymn's end by frequently using a verse of a meter different than that used in the hymn's body. However, they never used Gayatri meter to end a hymn or composition, possibly because it enjoyed a special level of reverence in Hindu texts. In general, all meters were sacred and the Vedic chants and hymns attribute the perfection and beauty of the meters to divine origins, referring to them as mythological characters or equivalent to gods. <laughs> Use of meter to identify corrupt texts The verse perfection in the Vedic texts, verse Upanishads and Smriti texts has led some Indologists from the 19th century onwards to identify suspected portions of texts where a line or sections are off the expected meter. Some editors have controversially used this metri causa principle to amend Sanskrit verses, assuming that their creative conjectural rewriting with similar sounding words will restore the meter. This practice has been criticized, states Patrick Olivelle, because such modern corrections may be changing the meaning, adding to corruption, and imposing the modern pronunciation of words on ancient times when the same syllable or more may have been pronounced differently. Large and significant changes in meter, wherein the meter of succeeding sections return to earlier sections, are sometimes thought to be an indication of later interpolations and insertion of text into a Sanskrit manuscript, or that the text is a compilation of works of different authors and time periods. However, some meters are easy to preserve and a consistent meter does not mean an authentic manuscript. This practice has also been questioned when applied to certain texts such as ancient and medieval era Buddhist manuscripts, in view of the fact that this may reflect versatility of the author or changing styles over author's lifetime. Topic. Texts Topic. Chanda Sutra. The Chanda Sutra is also known as Chanda Sastra, or Pingala Sutras after its author Pingala. It is the oldest Hindu treatise on prosody to have survived into the modern era. This text is structured in eight books, with a cumulative total of 310 sutras. It is a collection of aphorisms predominantly focused on the art of poetic meters, and presents some mathematics in the service of music. <laughs> The 11th century Bhashya on Pingala's Chanda Sutra by Ratnakarashanti, called Chandoratnakara, added new ideas to Prakrit poetry, and this was influential to prosody in Nepal, and to the Buddhist prosody culture in Tibet where the field was also known as Chandas or Sdebsbyor. Usage Post-Vedic poetry, epics The Anushtub Vedic meter has been the most popular in classical and post-classical Sanskrit works. It is also octosyllabic, next harmonic to Gayatri meter that is sacred to the Hindus, and it appears either in free verse or fixed syllabic form 
It has a rhythm, offers flexibility and creative space, but has embedded rules such as its sixth syllable is always long, the fifth syllable is always short, often, the seventh syllable in even numbered lines of a stanza is short iambic as well. The Anushtub is present in Vedic texts, but its presence is minor, and Trishtub and Gayatri meters dominate in the Rigveda for example. A dominating presence of the Anushtub meter in a text is a marker that the text is likely post Vedic. The Mahabharata, for example, features many verse meters in its chapters, but an overwhelming proportion of the stanzas, 95%, are slokas of the Anushtub type, and most of the rest are tristabs. The Hindu epics and the post Vedic classical Sanskrit poetry is typically structured as quatrains of four padas, verses, with the metrical structure of each pada completely specified. In some cases, pairs of padas may be scanned together as the hemistics of a couplet. It is then normal for the padas comprising a pair to have different structures, to complement each other aesthetically. Otherwise the four padas of a stanza have the same structure. <laughs> Chandas and mathematics The attempt to identify the most pleasing sounds and perfect compositions led ancient Indian scholars to study permutations and combinatorial methods of enumerating musical meters. The Pingala Sutras includes a discussion of binary system rules to calculate permutations of Vedic meters. Pingala, and more particularly the classical Sanskrit prosody period scholars, developed the art of Matramaru, which is the field of counting sequences such as 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 and so on Fibonacci numbers, in their prosody studies. The 10th century Halayudas commentary on Pingala Sutras, developed Maraprastara, which mirrors the Pascal's triangle in the West, and now also called as the Halayudas triangle in books on mathematics. The 11th-century Ratnakarashanti's Chandoratnakara describes algorithms to enumerate binomial combinations of meters through pratyaya. For a given class length, the six pratyaya were prastara, the table of arrangement, a procedure for enumerating arranging in a table all meters of the given length, nasta, a procedure for finding a meter given its position in the table without constructing the whole table, Udista, a procedure for finding the position in the table of a given meter without constructing the whole table. Lagukriya or Lagakriya, calculation of the number of meters in the table containing a given number of lagu or guru syllables. Samkhya, calculation of the total number of meters in the table. Advan, calculation of the space needed to write down the prastara table of a given class length. Some authors also considered, for a given meter, a the number of guru syllables, b the number of lagu syllables, c the total number of syllables, and d the total number of matras, giving expressions for each of these in terms of any two of the other three. The basic relations being that c equals a plus b and d equals 2a plus b. Influence Topic. In India The Chandas are considered one of the five categories of literary knowledge in Hindu traditions. The other four, according to Sheldon Pollock, are gunas or expression forms, riti, marga or the ways or styles of writing, alankara or tripology, and rasa, bhava or aesthetic moods and feelings. The chandas are revered in Hindu texts for their perfection and resonance, with the Gayatri meter treated as the most refined and sacred, and one that continues to be part of modern Hindu culture as part of yoga and hymns of meditation at sunrise. Topic. Outside India The Sanskrit chanda has influenced Southeast Asian prosody and poetry, such as Thai Chan Its influence, as evidenced in the 14th century Thai texts such as the Mahachit Kam Luang, is thought to have come either through Cambodia or Sri Lanka. Evidence of the influence of Sanskrit prosody in 6th century Chinese literature is found in the works of Shen Yu and his followers, probably introduced through Buddhist monks who visited India. Topic see also Slaka Shiksha Prosody Latin. Topic Notes Topic References Topic Bibliography Arnold, Edward Vernon 1905. Vedic Meter in its Historical Development. Cambridge University Press Reprint 2009. ISBN 978-1113224446. Guy L. Beck Sonic Theology, Hinduism and Sacred Sound. Mudalal Banarsidas. ISBN 978-81-208-1261-1.
Brown, Charles Philip 1869. Sanskrit Prosody and Numerical Symbols Explained. London, Trubner & Co. Deo, Ashwini. S. 2007. The Metrical Organization of Classical Sanskrit Verse Note, the URL and the journal number the pages differently, the version in the journal starts at page 63 PDF. Journal of Linguistics. Cambridge University Press. 4301. doi, 10.1017 per seconds 00222267060044452. Colebrook, H. T. 1873. On Sanskrit and Prakrit Poetry. Miscellaneous Essays, 2. London, Trubner & Co. pp. 57-146. Colson, Michael. 1976. Teach Yourself Sanskrit. Teach Yourself Books. Hodder & Stoughton. Hahn, Michael. 1982. Ratnakarasanti's Chandoratnakara. Kathmandu, Nepal Research Center. Hopkins, E. W. 1901. Epic Versification. The Great Epic of India. New York, C. Scribner's Sons. LCCN Friedrich Max Muller, Arthur Anthony MacDonald 1886. A Sanskrit Grammar for Beginners, 2 ed. Longmans, Green. p. 178. P. D. F. Patwardhan, M. 1937. Chandorakana. Bombay, Karnataka Publishing House. B. A. Pingle, 1898. Indian Music. Education Societies Press. Sheldon Pollock 2006. The Language of the Gods in the World of Men, Sanskrit, Culture, and Power in Premodern India. University of California Press. ISBN 978-0-520-93202-9. Roche, Ludo The Puranas, Otto Harisovitz Verlag, ISBN 978-3447025225 Velanker, H. D. J. Ottoman, a collection of ancient texts on Sanskrit prosody and a classical list of Sanskrit meters with an alphabetical index. Bombay, Haritozamala. Weber, Albrecht 1863. Indisch Studien, 8. Leipzig. Annette Wilkie, Oliver Meebus 2011. Sound and Communication, an Aesthetic Cultural History of Sanskrit Hinduism. Walter de Gruyter. ISBN 978-3-11-018159-3. Horace Heyman Wilson 1841. An Introduction to the Grammar of the Sanskrit Language. Madden. Maurice Winternitz 1963. History of Indian Literature. Mudalal Banarsidas. ISBN 978-81-208-0056-4. External links Prosody Chandasastra, Chapter 15 of the Natyasastra Manuscripts of Pingala Sutra, Vrita Ratnakara and Shrutabhada, University of Kentucky 2004, includes poetic meter marked sections of Buddha Karita Vritaratnakara by Kadara Bhatta, and Chandamanjari by Pandit Gangadasa, manuscripts on Sanskrit prosody, compiled with commentary by Vidyasagara Harvard University Archives, Hathi Trust, University of Wisconsin Archive Sanskrit, Vritaratnakara only Hindi, Vritaratnakara only Tamil Sanskrit prosody and numerical symbols explained, Charles P. Brown, Trubner & Co. A list of 1,300 plus meters in post-classical Sanskrit prosody, Universität Heidelberg, Germany Sanskrit meter recognizer this is an incomplete test version, recordings of recitation, H. V. Nagaraja Rao Ori, Mysore, Ashwini Deo, Ram Karan Sharma, Arvind Kolatkar intensive course on Sanskrit prosody held at CEAS, Bucharest, by Srinand L. Bapat 1 Introduction to Sanskrit prosody Learn Sanskrit. Org.